Hello everybody, I'm Oliver from Blenders.com and in this video we'll talk about an issue that affects every 3D artist and how to use an add-on to help improve it. The problem is that render times are long, long and boring. So long and boring that sometimes you just want to grab your computer and throw it out of the window or just jump yourself because sometimes uh, just for a single frame, waiting a bunch of hours, this is totally crazy. So there are different solutions for this. And uh, one of them may be buying more powerful hardware. This is expensive, but yeah, you may get an improvement in your render times. But usually you want to use a bunch of computers because if one powerful computer can render faster, imagine if you join 10 computers, that would be a great improvement in render times. However, it means that you would have to buy a bunch of computers. You have to maintain them. They consume a lot of electricity. If you have them all in a room, that room may become a sauna. So you have to be very careful with this. And uh, if you own a studio and uh, really need to render a lot, this may be a solution, but uh, it's not for everyone. Then you, you have online render farms, and these are great. I have used them myself in the past. I use them in the present, and I probably will keep using them in the future, at least for a while. And uh, they work really well. You just upload your file. They use their servers to render it. You pay them for the time that you use their servers and then you download the result. This is really elegant, it's very easy, and it works great. However, we have a fourth solution. What if you could use an add-on like CrowdRender and use those extra computers that you have at home? Maybe uh, you live with your family and they have other computers at home. Maybe you have a laptop lying around. Maybe you have an old computer lying around. Or maybe you have friends that have powerful computers at their places. And yeah, sure, they may use them for playing games, but that's not important, right? They can stop playing games and let you use their computer for rendering, right? Because it's a good cause. So in this video, I'm going to show you how CrowdRender works and uh, what it is and how to use it. You may know this scene. It's a popular scene created by MyPan and it's used as a common render speed test to compare different hardware in Blender. CrowdRender developers tried rendering it with many combinations of hardware using their add-on to make sure it works and here are some of the results. So first they use their workstation and keep in mind that these are all renders done with CPU. So if you have GPUs, you may even get better times than this. But uh, with this i5-4570 with four threads, they got 30 minutes, 25 seconds. This is a long time. And so they tried then with CrowdRender to join a dual CN server in the mix with uh, 16 threads. This is a powerful CPU and they reduced the render time to 10 minutes, nine seconds. This is quite substantial. And then they added to the mix an Amazon server with 36 threads. The add-on lets you add Amazon servers so you can uh, pay for them, of course, and uh, add them to the mix so you can get even faster renders. And you can see that it got down to a bit more than two minutes. So from 30 minutes to two minutes, that's crazy. But they didn't stop there. They wanted to take it a bit farther and see where they could get it. So um, they joined forces with other people and they managed to uh, get together eight workstations. And I will spare you the technical details because they were different workstations. And uh, they joined five Amazon servers to the mix and they got it down to 16.1 seconds. So just this is just to show you how much the render times can improve from 30 minutes to about 16 seconds. How amazing is that? And sure, not everybody has eight workstations lying around at home, but this is why we have good friends that happen to be gamers with powerful computers, right? So CrowdRender is a free add-on that allows you to quickly build a render farm connecting computers over a local network or over the internet and use their power to basically help you increase render speeds. Want to use your friend's powerful gamer PC to help you render? Check. Want to work on your laptop during a trip or when you are at the client's office but render in your powerful computer at home? Check. All you need is an internet connection and Blender running CrowdRender in all computers. If you want to use CrowdRender, you just have to go to crowd-render.com. In this website, you'll have all the information. You even have a forum where you can ask questions you can report problems and I can tell you that the developers are very involved and they will be happy to support you if you have any issue. I've been collaborating with them for a long time and they're really nice people, always there to help you. You have a good documentation where you can see all the 
details, all right, that I'm not going to go through in this video. In this video, I'll, I'm going to keep it basic and short so you can see how it works and you can see the idea behind the add-on. But if you want to dive into the details or if you need more information for some of the steps, you will have to come here. And now we have to download. So you go to downloads, you create an account and follow instructions. Once you have downloaded it, you just have to come to Blender, press Control Alt U, go to the add-ons list. And uh, here I just already have it installed so I can enable it. And of course you would have to install it. So just go to install add-on add -on from file. Just select the zip file that you'll get when you download it from the website and click on install and it will appear here. Okay, so enable it. And this is the image that we are going to render. And as you can see, I already rendered it uh, just with my computer, not using Crowd Render. And you can see that it took four minutes, 50 seconds, all right? So now Crowd Render appears here in the Render tab of the Properties Editor at the very bottom. And uh, remember this step, because this is exactly what you will have to do in your other computer. So for example, I will be using my laptop for this demonstration. And in my laptop, I will also have to install Crowd Render and enable it. And once you have it enabled, you can have to come here and click on Start. All right, so now we have here some options. Remember, you have to do this in every computer. Every computer has to be run in Blender and Crowd Render has to be enabled and started. Okay, so before we start, I would like to show you the interface of Crowd Render. You can see it's very simple. There are just a few options, but it's all we need. So basically, first we have this render still and render animation. These are the buttons that you have to press if you want to use Crowd Render. If you go up and uh, use these buttons that are the normal ones from Cycles or press F12 in your keyboard, you will only render with this computer as usual. If you want to use Crowd Render, and take advantage of the connected computers, you have to render through Crowd Render. Okay? Up here you have this button that will lead you to the documentation. So if you have some problem or if you need more information about some of the features or options, you can just go there. Right? Very recommended. Here we have the notes that we have connected. In this case, I have this uh, laptop, which is Oliver XPS 15. It tells us information here that is synced. Here we will see different information. So when we are rendering, it will tell us that it's rendering. It, right now, is uh, that is synced. So this means that uh, this computer is uh, load has loaded already the scene that we have here and is ready to render. Okay. We have these three options here. This one to the left is for connecting. It's the same than pressing this button right here. It tells us that it's connected. If it was not connected or if if it had been disconnected or it's failing or something, this node would be grayed out. Then we have the camera. The camera is for enabling or disabling this node. So we have a bunch of nodes, a bunch of computers that are connected. We can disable some of them so they don't render. All right. And here at the end, we have options. In future versions, there will be more options here, but here is just the tiles that we are going to use. In this case, for this laptop, I usually use 128. All right, I'm gonna render with GPU in this laptop. This is a very basic GPU, it's a 1050, GTX 1050, but well, it will help us. And this camera here is for this machine. You can see that it belongs to this machine. So if, let's say that you are in a cafe with your laptop and you want to render at home on your powerful computer. So you would connect to your powerful computer right here and uh, you may want to disable your laptop. So only your computer remotely will be rendering and uh, when the render is ready, it will load it here into your render buffer, all right? As if you had rendered it in that computer that you're working on, all right? If you enable it, it will use both computers. You can have here other connected computers, no problem with that. These options that right here are for adding new computers, removing them, connecting the one that you have selected and resyncing all of them. So when you click on resync, usually if you have big changes in the scene or something like that, or, or you want to make sure that all of the changes have been sent to the other computers, you will click on resync and it will upload to the other computers the complete file and all of the assets. Now, it is very important that if you have textures in the scene, 
you actually pack them, right? So go to external data and pack them because this, for now at least, it only sends the packed blend file to the other computers. So you have external uh, linked files and stuff like that. It won't be supported for now. Finally, you have the open, open cloud rendering panel. This is a new option that is uh, still in development. So you may not have this option yet, but basically it let us uh, by making and creating an account on CrowdRender, you can add credit and you can use Amazon servers here. You can uh, add some instances. I'm not going to do it now, but you basically add servers. They are added to your list of computers and you can use them for rendering. So the render will be a lot faster, but the amount of time that you're using them, it will count uh, against your credit. All right, so just keep that in mind. It's a cool feature, a cool option for those times that uh, you are on a deadline and you really need to get your renders fast. So, of course, we need to know how to connect computers. This is the most important part of Crowd Render, right? So, to show you how to do it, I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to connect it again. So, basically, I'm going to add a new node. I can double click here and name it. So, it will be Oliver XPS 15. And in many cases, just adding the name of the computer here, it, if it actually fits the name that you have in the operative system of uh, the other computer, it will get it and it will connect automatically. Other times, you will need to go a bit farther and add the IP address and that would be it. So just click on connect. And this is what I like about CrowdRender. It is really easy to connect different computers. I have suffered with this with other software before. So here, let's go with 192. 168.1.53. In this case, I already know the IP address. If you don't know it, check the documentation because uh, depending on your operative system, there may be different ways of doing it. And you can see it's as easy as that. It's ready to render. Okay. And in this case, it's synced because uh, it had already loaded the scene before. But if, if you didn't, uh, if you hadn't, instead of synced, it would be uploading and uh, the percentage of the upload. And just so you can see it, I will click on resync. So it uploads the file again. There you see it. And uh, this is nice because it tells you the process that uh, this other computer is doing at a given point in time. All right, so now we are ready to render. And before we start, I have to mention that uh, I had to pause the video and the recording and uh, I have to render this again. So now I have a slightly different time than before, but it's still about four minutes, 50 seconds. And uh, I will switch this to slot one. So then we have both renders to compare and this is ready to render. So we can do this. I'm gonna make sure that here I have 128. That's perfect and click on render still. Right, so here you can see that it tells you sometimes information about the other computer and about each computer basically. It tells you jumps from the local into the remote computers. And here in this menu, you have to go up and you have information about how the render is going. And uh, here, this is a very interesting thing because you can see that the remote computer has gone really fast. And look at this, it only rendered this little part. So basically when each remote computer finishes, it sends the information here. And now this computer keeps rendering right here. Now, for now, the render only appears once it's finished. Um, in the future, it will be possible to see the tiles as they are rendered. So that will be great. Now, what's going on here? Why did this computer do this? Well, because at this point, um, CrowdRender doesn't still know how powerful each computer is. Right. In the future, uh, they will have a better algorithm to figure this out. But for now, you basically have to launch a first render that will let CrowdRender know how computers are faring. So right now, for example, this computer rendered a very small part and uh, it was very fast. Right. This other computer is still at 20% and the other one finished a while ago. So what will happen next time that we render is that CrowdRender will allocate a bigger space in the render to the remote computer to balance things out and make sure that both finish at the same time and they both uh, render as much as they can, right? So this way you'll get better render times. So for this, basically the more renders you take, the more crowd render knows how powerful the computer the computers are and the better it can balance 
how much it sends to each computer. So right now I will pause the render and we'll talk to you after it finishes. Okay, the render is finished and you can see that the render time is exactly the same that we have before. Is it a coincidence? Well, yes and no. It, it, is, it is just that the, basically uh, this computer rendered everything and the remote computer only rendered a little corner of the image. But now, this time, it will make it better. So just keep, the, keep in mind that uh, the first few renders are for training crowd render, so it knows how to balance uh, every computer on the list. So let's launch a new one and let's see how it fares this time. All right, this is done. And uh, you can see that now it has done a much better job. Just three minutes and 37 seconds. That's a lot of difference. All right, so you can see that we got it down from 450 to 3. 37. That's a great difference and uh, keep in mind I'm only using the same computer plus a little laptop that uh, has a very basic uh, graphics card so you can improve this a lot if you join more computers or if you have more powerful computers sitting around or if you have some friend that owns a powerful computer you can connect to it through the internet and also use it for the render. In fact uh, a while ago I did a test with James uh, rendering in my laptop using his computer from Australia. So that's pretty amazing. So yeah, that's it. You can see how you can improve the render times a lot just using computers that you have laying around or other computers that you can find from your friends and family. If you like what you see, you can go to crowdrender.com, create an account and download it for free. Just keep in mind that it's still an alpha and you may find some hiccups while using it, but again, the developers are willing to help if you have any questions, problems, or find a bug. Also, just to let you know that they are currently running a crowdfunding campaign at Indiegogo, you can find the link in the description below, to get funding to improve the add-on and take it to the next level, adding a bunch of cool features. Like, for example, sharing your computer with a friend using a link, that would be awesome. Web app with information, available computers, render statistics, etc. Tile by tile refreshing on render, as I mentioned earlier. Better adaptive render slicing depending on how powerful the computer is and the complexity of render. This would of course improve render times. More controls over remote computers. Using the power of remote computers for real time render. This would be amazing. It would mean that uh, when you are working on your materials and stuff, you would get a faster preview on the viewport. Uh, using the power of remote computers. Wouldn't that be amazing? I have collaborated with uh, CrowdRender developers for a long time and I know they have dedicated so much time and effort to the development. So if you think that this add-on can help you in any way, make sure to support them and I encourage you to visit their Indiegogo campaign uh, so they can uh, keep improving it and make it even better. So I hope you liked it and see you soon. You will find all of the links in the description below.